I, uh, first I want to thank everyone for having me here, for being uh, afforded this honor and this opportunity to be able to talk to you. It's my first time I've ever been in Texas besides flying through, and i got to tell you, uh, just in my observation this morning, I've already met a lot of great people, a great country, and a great place. Uh, you got to love a place that when you pull up and you see a no littering sign that says, don't mess with Texas on it. you got to love a place like that. It just shows a lot about the character and the, uh, the people, the great people in this state. I've always heard a lot about it. It's great to be here. Um, I want to take some minutes. I do need some cards because of my injuries. I have some memory lapses, so I apologize. But there's a couple things I want to talk about today. And one of the first and foremost is there's two groups of people that I greatly respect. One of those groups of people are the young Marine soldiers that are sitting here right here today. I uh, respect them for a lot of reasons. When I joined the Marine Corps in 1984, the world was relatively at peace. The biggest thing going on was about a year before that, the, uh, I, uh, the uh, country of Beirut, the bombing there, the issues going on in that country, but relatively the world was at peace. For the young generations that join and list today that serve and keep re-enlisting and continue to serve, my hat's off to them and I have great respect for them because they joined, they raised their right hands, volunteered and sworn and sweared to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States, this great country of ours, and keep it free. And they do it knowing that they have a great chance of going into harm's way and defeating our enemies and keeping this country free. And we are this country only because of them. And, and I, I'll tell you what, I can never say enough thanks for the uh, young Marines, the soldiers are sitting here. There can never be enough appreciation. We can never do enough events like this to show the appreciation for them. And I just have all the respect for them and the, the job they do. I realize that we are what we are because of them. Today is a volunteer force. Volunteer force means it takes someone volunteering to stand up and say enough. Volunteering to stand up and say, I want to do my part. Volunteering to stand up and say that, hey, we need to keep this going and we need to serve. And walk into our recruiting office, go down to the recruit depot and enlist and, and join and do the hard work and sweat and do the blood and the tears to become a Marine or a soldier or whatever it is. And that volunteer force, I'm convinced, Tom Brokaw said many years ago, the greatest generation, World War II, I'm convinced the young men, the young women that joined the service today is the next greatest generation. I am utterly humbled every day and proud and honored to serve beside them, to work with them, to lead them, to mentor them, to motivate them and inspire them. They make me a better man. And, and Bill, you mentioned I made your son a better man. These, these individuals I serve with, I, I beg to differ, they make me a better man. Let me tell you a little bit about some of the jobs that they do and the, and the challenges they face. The enemy we face overseas, we have two choices. We allow them to come over here on, our, on their terms, or we go over there and we hunt the little son of a bitches down and we fight them on our terms. The enemy we face today, they know no surrender. The enemy we face today, they have no respect or regard for human life. The enemy we face today, they will never quit. They have told me that if it takes a hundred years, we got a hundred years. We will wait and we will wait until we have the opportunity to strike. They have told me that if you leave our country, we will follow you to America. We will find you. And these young men right here, the young women that join the list, are taking a fight to them. And they're beating them on their own ground, they're beating them on their own terms, they're beating them on their own turf, and they're taking a fight to them, and they're whipping their butts, and they're keeping them down, and they're going to defeat them. They will persevere. Because these young men that join today, these young men that sit right here, they are the greatest generation that we have seen in my lifetime, and they deserve, again, the appreciation and respect you can never imagine. The enemy... Speaking of the Hell House, November 13, 2004, the enemy that I faced, the enemy Byron Norwood faced, the enemy many others faced, we lost one, one killed that day and we had 13 wounded. 13 wounded trying to save four others. 
the enemy we faced that day and every day before that and every day after that, we would come across weapons caches. In those weapons caches, we would find drugs, methamphetamines, cocaine, all the different kinds of drugs. I'm not real familiar with them all because I'm not a drug user. But we would find all these drugs, and the reason they would take these drugs is they would hype themselves up so they could take multiple hits. It was not uncommon for us to shoot them with 762 millimeter rounds, watch them go down, and they'd get right back up and run off again. And the reason they did that was they wanted to continue to fight until they were able to take as many of us with them as possible. That's the enemy we are facing overseas today. That never makes the USA Today and the New York Times. That's what these young men had to persevere and overcome. And they know no treaty. There will never be a peace treaty with them. Like I said, if it takes 100 years, it, they will wait 100 years. The only peace treaty they will ever understand is that of a 5.56 caliber lightweight magazine fed, gas operated, air cold, shoulder fired weapon, capable of fired semi automatic or three round burst. That's the only treaty. But fortunately, we have the young men that join, the young women that join, and we will defeat them. The second group, the second group of people that I greatly respect and I have the utter appreciation, respect, and admiration for is the families. The families of the young men and women that serve. You gave up your most precious commodity and your unselfishness to allow your young son, daughter, your husband, or whoever it may be, to enlist, serve, support, and support, defend the Constitution of the United States is the greatest unselfishness you could ever ask for. At a time when a lot of people would stand up and say, not mine, let someone else do it. And I've heard this many times. I've had, told in my face, not my son, let the neighbor's son do it. Anyone that has their self should be able to stand up and say, not mine, or my, I support mine and let them do it. I have a great respect and admiration for it. And I want you to know that your sons, your daughters, anyone here, whether currently serving, served in the past, they represent more than a number or statistic. They represent a brother, a sister, a son, a daughter, a husband, a spouse, they represent an individual who, when their nation called, they answered. They represent a volunteer, someone willing to put others before self. And I be served beside a lot of these great Americans. And unfortunately, no many who paid the ultimate sacrifice. The correction was actually we lost 33 overseas. 30, out of a battalion of Marines, 33 were killed. Over 700 were wounded. Out of those 700 wounded, we had about 300 that multiple Purple Hearts. They would, they would try all means to get back into the fight if, they, if we would allow them. That's the kind of man that we have serving overseas right now. And I gotta tell you that these individuals, again, are more than a statistic. They have names, names such as Byron Norwood, names such as Stephen Rintamaki, names such as Abe Simpson, and many more. And these individuals, and I know these individuals, if I was able, if they had the chance, and I was able today to ask them if they was ever able to redo it all over again and choose a different profession, they would say no. They did what they believed in, and I know that those three and all the others that I could mention, if I had the time, they believed in three things. They believed in doing the right thing, they believed in their country, and they believed in their family. And they believed that they were protecting all three of those and would never choose anything but that. I also see a lot of young people, kids in the audience out here. A lot of today's generation, you read, you read comic books, you read about Superman. Or you look at sports athletes, and you look up the, the Michael Jordans and the, the Dwayne Wade and the Shaquille O'Neal's. And many even look at those people as role models and heroes. Well, let me tell you something. The real role models and heroes are sitting at this table, sitting at that table, and very spread out throughout the audience. The 
young generation here, these are the people you need to look up to and you need to model yourselves after. Their unselfishness, their courage, their dedication, and it ain't about foreign policy. It's about doing what you believe in. It's about mom, dad, you protected me for 17 years, now it's my turn. It's my turn now to protect you, to protect our constitution, protect this country, and protect this great people that live here. Because I'll tell you, the enemy we face overseas, they will be over here. They hate us, and they hate us for no other reason than the fact that we have the freedom to be able to stand here today. The fact that we have the freedom to be able to say what we want, and we can put up Don't Mess With Texas signs on our roads, and we have the freedom to do that. And they've been training since they were four years old, five years old, six years old, ten years old, to beat us. But that will not happen. I promise you, today's generation, they are winning overseas. Iraq, the city of Fallujah, that used to be the most dangerous place on earth. Now today, Marines are walking down the streets. They're walking down the streets with no body armor. They are walking down the streets in many cases without even weapons because of the security they brought to that region. Now we're turning our fight to Afghanistan and we'll prevail. We will, we will defeat that enemy also. We will keep this country what it is. With that said, I just want to close with saying the gentlemen here respect you, love you, adore you. Keep up the great thing. Always know you made a difference. Never, ever, ever doubt that. Never doubt it. For a second. And to the audience, to the families, thank you for supporting this. Thank you for having me. And it's, it's honored and humble to be here. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah.